I'm going to tell you why your kid should join a combat sport. Now, there are some team sports out there which are great, like basketball, baseball. It's nice to work with a team and go out there and try and do your best as a team. However, there are things in combat sports that you cannot learn in other sports. There are things like, for example, emotional control is paramount in combat sports because let's say in uh, another sport, let's say baseball, you lose it, you get pissed off. You have time to cool down on your own later, right? You have time after you, if you strike out, right, you can have a seat on the bench. If you're not doing well in soccer, like, like when I used to play, coach could pull you out and you could rest up a little bit or hang out on the side and then cool off that way. However, in a combat sport, you can't lose your cool because you can't sub. There's no sub. It's just you. It's just you in there and you have to deal with it. And one of the big things I would tell people is that it helps so much with emotional control because if I'm sparring someone and I know how this feels, if I get kicked in the face, I used to get super pissed and run in. And the people who are good would just kick me in the face again. And then I learned pretty quick that you can't do that. So even if you do get kicked in the face or hit in the face or you take a strong body shot, whatever, you have to keep your wits about you and you have to understand that even though I'm upset and I want to get these points back, or even though I feel like tears are coming in, I can't show that because they might come after me even more. It helps you hone and control your emotions to where, you know, later if you want to cry after the match, that's okay. You go to the bathroom, deal with your deal with the issues. But it teaches you you need to perform in the moment. The second biggest part is the accountability. In a team sport, you can blame your teammates. Very easy about, oh, if so-and-so just passed me the ball properly, uh, we would have been able to score. In a combat sport, especially in a combat sport, there's, there's no one else. You can't even really blame the ref because even if you do blame the ref, so let's say, let's take uh, tennis, for example. In tennis, ref isn't calling well. They're, uh, they're calling all your line stuff out, but they're calling all of hers in. So even you can get pissed off at the ref and you can kind of blame the ref, right, for losing points. However, in a combat sport, even if the ref is on the other kid's side, even if the ref is on the other kid's side, the issue is whether or not the ref is cheating, you're the one taking physical damage. You're the one who's getting the physical, immediate physical feedback. So you have to learn how to deal with that reality as well. And so I think that overall, you should enroll your kid in some kind of combat sport. Now, what kind of combat sport should you look for? Jiu-Jitsu is pretty good. I've seen a lot of kids grow up in boxing. Uh, personally, if you want to do striking, I would say Taekwondo because Taekwondo, there's not as much head contact as compared to some other striking sports. They learn some distance control and they learn how to kick, which is essentially, I think, one of the harder ways, one of the harder moves to strike in. So that you start off with that and you can branch into other ones if you want. So you're, you have your kid there. And it's important that you go to a school that's sparse. And it's also important you find a tournament or like the peak tournament they go to. So, for example, in Cobra Kai, it's the Tri-Valley Tournament. is like the tournament everyone goes to and trains for. And you want to do this for a few things. You want to go to these major tournaments for a few things. Because, number one, in addition to all the things that the solo sport, combat sports already give you, your kid learns how to ramp up and train and be consistently focused and determined on a goal that's gonna happen in the future, that, and how to deal with the pressure. So in life, there's entrance exams, there's interviews, there are uh, college uh, SATs, right? And all of those are times where you must perform. You have to sleep well the night before, you have to eat properly to fuel your brain, uh, you have to prepare beforehand, you can't just show up there right? And so all of this kind of culminates on your way up to that peak performance. And you're teaching your kid, if you go through these through year after year, okay, this is time for this. It's time for the tournament. You eat properly. You sleep properly. You make sure they're sticking to the training schedule so they're well prepared. And it teaches this cycle of, okay, this is time, like in this, I'm in the season right now of having to be focused. And then they try their best at the tournament deal with the pressure, which I think is a big thing to do. And then they do their best, right? And when you're at the tournament though, and I want to say this to all the parents is it's good. You have your kid in a martial art, but you also should have your kid trying to win. Now at Sparta, there's a, we have a little paradox here where we teach kids to do their best. 
right? And when we go to a tournament, we want you to do your best. But in training, you need to win. It's important that you're trying to get the result and be result oriented in training because that will force pressure, that will force you to hone your techniques. That's gonna just amplify you to a different level. And then when you're at a tournament, there's already a lot of pressure, so you don't need more pressure. Relax and let yourself perform. Now, something had happened recently where I was told that a lot of parents a week or two before this major tournament decided to go on vacation. Now, in my head, that's the equivalent of your kid has a final week coming up and then you went on vacation and you didn't let them take their books. So now they're about to land to go to finals week and they got like three days to study for all their finals. And now they have to cram. Like that's just a recipe for disaster. And then afterwards you're like, oh, well you did your best, but that's not gonna really help your kid very much. I think you need to stick to the training plan, understand that as the tournament's coming up, training is ramping up. So you should move all your vacations to after the, the um, after the event, my family knows that when we were growing up, nothing came before nationals. There was no vacation scheduled in that time. As I got older and my tournaments became more spread out, more sporadic, my parents knew, especially if my mom was trying to plan a family trip, she would always ask, are there any, are there any tournaments coming up within uh, this, this period, time period, whatever? And if the answer was yes, I wasn't going on the vacation. It didn't matter to me. I needed to train because at the end of the day, I'm the one who needs to perform. I'm the one who needs to execute. And if I'm not ready, I'm the one getting kicked in the face. So for you parents who are wondering about a combat sport for your kid, I think you should join. I think it teaches the mental software needed to be an adult at a much, much faster rate than you would get from another sport because of the, the feedback I was telling you about. And I think overall, it's just a good move. And so I wish this for you. I wish this for your kids. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.